the drift velocity. Let's understand the drift velocity. What is drift velocity? The average velocity attained, the average velocity attained by the charged particle in a material due to the electric field is called as the drift velocity. The average velocity that they attain because of because of the electric field. Okay. So from where will this electric field come into picture? Well, it will only come into picture because you have connected it across a battery, right? The moment you do this, there will be a net electric field and then the drift starts. Because of the thermal energy, there was motion, but the average velocity because of this thermal energy or the average thermal velocity itself was equal to zero. Got it? But now that you have connected this to a battery, now there is a potential difference. And because of this potential difference, an electric field has come into picture. And under this influence of electric field, all these charges will start to drift slowly. They will be doing all these random motions, okay? Don't forget that they're, they're, they're not doing the random motion. So they're, they're doing the random motions, but there will be a net shift. Okay, this is the story. See how beautiful this is. If you are able to imagine, it's, it's just wonderful. Because once you have understood this story, it's all a child's play for you then. Okay, all the derivations, everything will be so simple. So they're do, doing all these random motions, but they're also moving. They're also moving. They're also drifting slowly. Okay, and this average velocity, velocity that is attained by the charged particle is what we call as the drift velocity. So you see the electric field is there. The moment you close the switch, you get an average value of velocity, which we can just calculate it by calculating the average velocity of all these particles. So let us see that how do we get this drift velocity? How do we get the drift? Okay. Let us say we are talking about one particular particle, one particular scenario. We have one particular particle and we want to analyze what goes on. Okay. We want to analyze properly what goes on. Let us say that uh, there is some electric field in this direction. This is the direction of electric field. So the net force will be in this direction. This is the force. No problem. All right. On these electrons. So I just want to analyze what goes on. Okay. Now, the moment you see this moving, what happens? What happens and how it is moving? Now, overall, still the motion is random, but it is drifting slightly, right? Why? Let us say it was moving with U1 thermal velocity. As it moves like this, it always experiences a force in this direction. Always experience a force in this direction, right? So there is an acceleration, which means the velocity will change to V1. Correct? The velocity is going to change to V1. Now, of course, there are metal atoms and these metal atoms will, will be treated as a hindrance because as these electrons are moving, they are going to collide. Now, when I say collision, it does not mean actual physical collision. Not necessarily there has to be an actual physical contact. In physics, what we understand as collision is if, if the velocity of one particle is affected by another, we say that they have collided. <laughs> All right. Okay. Did you understand this? Okay. So we are saying that, okay, imagination, it's, it's better to imagine it like this, that, okay, it is moving with some initial value of thermal velocity. Let us say U1 was the thermal velocity because of which it was doing all this random motion. Now, suddenly there appears an electric field. Because of this electric field, there is a force. Because of this force, there is an acceleration. So now all these motion, but all these are doing all these motion and they are also shifting together. All right, they're, they're slowly shifting in this side or in this side, whichever way you think. Okay. Now, we say that this is the drift or the net displacement. Now you can see. Now there is a net displacement. Correct. Now, when we talk about this particle or this electron, which is moving like this, okay? So within this length, within this span of distance that it is traveling, there is no collision, right? So we call this as free path. We call this as what? Free path. Let's denote the free path as lambda one for this particle number one, let us say. Or for this particular path, let us call it as lambda 1. Again, it is going to follow some other path. We'll call it as lambda 2 again. So, what will be the mean of all of this? So, there will be, for n number of particles, there will be n number of paths. How many particles are there? Many, right? So, we can get 
the mean of all this path. So I can define lambda mean or this is called as mean free path. Mean of all the free paths, lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus lambda 3 for all these particles to lambda n divided by n. This is called as what? Mean free path. Why it is called as free path? Because in, in this zone, in this region, there is no collision. So the distance traveled between two successive collision is what we call as the free path. And when you take mean of all of this, a mean free path. Simple? Okay. Now, if we are saying that it is moving with a thermal velocity of u1 and the acceleration that we have, acceleration is equal to magnitude of acceleration is ee by m, no problem. What can we write about v1? Because now obviously we can treat within this free path, can I assume the motion to be a straight line? Yes, it is. Is the acceleration constant, sir? Well, is the electric field constant? Yes. Is the charge on an electron constant? Yes. Is the mass of an electron constant? Yes. So the acceleration is also constant. So am I free to use the equation of kinematics? Am I free to use the equation of kinematics? Yes, definitely. Okay. So what will be this value of V1? V1 will be equal to U1 plus A times P. Now, what is this time? Let us define this time as tau. Let us define this time as tau. What is this time tau? The time taken between two successive collisions. So let us say this is tau 1. Let us say the time taken for this one is tau 2. So tau 1. Okay. So what is tau 1? It is called as relaxation time. What is relaxation time? It's the time between two successive collisions. It's the time between two successive collision. This is called as relaxation time. Just like the distance between two successive collision is called as the free path. In the same way, the time taken between two successive collision is called as the relaxation time. Of course, the relaxation time for this one will be different, this one will be different and so on. Okay. All right. Now, this is for one particle. Again, if I, if I draw it for the same particle, it will be u2 and then v2 and, and so on. So, I can write it for v2. I can write for n number of particles. What will be average of all these velocities that we are talking about? What will be this average? So this is going to be equal to v1 plus v2 plus v3 and so on, vn, correct? If I want to write a cumulative formula of v average, let's take the average, let's calculate v1 for the first one, then v2 for the second one, v3 for the third one. Let's, let's go on calculating these values of velocities. No? If we calculate all these values of velocity, we are going to get n number of velocity. What will be average of all these velocities? Obviously, v1 plus v2 plus v3 plus v up to vn. And how will this formula look like? The formula is going to look like v1 plus or let me write it as v average. v average is going to look like as v1 plus v2 plus v3 and so on up to vn divided by n. And this is going to be equal to u1 plus u2 and so on up to un divided by n because you see u1 for the first u2, u3 and you go on adding it like that plus a times of tau1, tau2 and so on up to tau n divided by n. Average relaxation time. Got this? Till this point no problem? Okay. What do you get? What do you get finally? What is this? This is the average of all the thermal velocities. Average of all the thermal velocities. So what we know now? V average is equal to u average plus a times of tau average. Can I write it like this? And what is this u average? u average is nothing but thermal, right? Thermal velocity. What is the average of thermal velocity? Zero. What is the average of thermal velocity? Zero. So what do you get as v average? v average is equal to a times of tau average. No problem. What was the value of A? A is equal to E E by M. Let's substitute. And we know this V average is nothing but what? V average is nothing but? V average is nothing but the drift velocity. Correct? That is how we define drift velocity in the first place itself. Correct? So what we can write now? Let me write it over here. Let me just rub all this off and write the main formula. What is the value of 
v drift v drift is equal to v average is equal to e e divided by small m times tau average this is the value of drift velocity my dear friends this is the value of drift velocity yes the terms are important how you got to this expression is very important and this is how you should understand that how we get to this particular expression okay so i'm sure you must have noted it down so we had taken again the story again quickly so we had discussed about the drift no problem we told that the field is in this direction the force will be in this direction correct so we substitute all these values we know a is equal to ee by m we substitute we get vd is equal to v average which is equal to minus ee by m so average okay so and we also define what mean free path we also define what relaxation time all these things are cool 